These instruments come in several sizes which are capable of pipetting different ranges of volumes. The most common are the P20, which can deliver two to 20 microliters, the P200, which can deliver 20 to 200 microliters, and finally the P1000, which can deliver 200 to 1000 microliters. We use these instruments in conjunction with disposable and often sterile tips. For our purposes today, we will be using sterile tips. First, gather all the equipment and supplies needed. Make sure your workspace is clean and organized before beginning. When working with these instruments, remember to never exceed the upper or lower limits of these pipetters. This will damage the pipetter and each one costs two to three hundred dollars. Just as a reminder, here are the limits again. We need to transfer 150 microliters of this antibiotic solution into this bottle of medium. So we need to set the P200 to 150. Set the desired volume by turning the centrally located rings clockwise to increase the volume or counterclockwise to decrease the volume. Once you have reached the desired volume, you will need to place a tip on the discharge end of the pipetter. Open the lid just long enough to place a tip on the end of the pipetter and then close the lid. Since we are working with a sterile tip, do not touch the tip to anything or set it down on the bench. Also, don't forget to check the size of the tip to make sure you are using the proper one. On the pipetter, there is a main plunger. This plunger has two different positions when it is depressed. The first of these stopping points is used to expel air before drawing up liquid. The second is to discharge the liquid. It is important to remember that when preparing to draw up fluid, you cannot go past the first stop. Now draw up 150 microliters of the antibiotic solution. Hold the pipetter straight up and down, not at an angle. The antibiotic solution is sterile, so be careful to use good aseptic technique. Depress the plunger until you feel the initial resistance. This empties the micropipetter so that it can draw up the liquid. Remove the cap from the liquid and insert the tip into the solution. Make sure you place the tip just barely below the surface of the liquid and not as deep as possible. Carefully and slowly release the plunger. Remember that you must allow the pipette to fill to final volume before removing it from the solution to avoid the presence of bubbles. Once all the fluid is in the tip, remove it from the liquid and place the cap back on the container. We are ready to expel the liquid. Discharge the solution into the appropriate container by depressing the plunger to the second stop point. We always look at the tip to make sure that the liquid has been expelled. Now you can discard of the tip by pressing down on the plunger completely and disposing of the tip into the proper waste container. Remember, you must change tips in between drawing individual solutions in order to avoid mixing or contaminating the solutions used. Once you are finished, make sure to return all of your equipment back to its proper area and clean up your workspace. Never place a pipetter with the tip attached down on the workbench. Keep the pipetter in your hand at all times after you've attached the tip to your pipette. The box of tips should never be left open. Make sure to close the box after you remove a tip to prevent airborne contamination. Always keep the pipette vertical. Never hold it horizontally. The solution could possibly drain back into the pump, contaminating it. Holding the pipetter at an angle greater than 20 degrees from the upright position may cause an inaccurate amount of liquid to be drawn. Check the tip of your micro pipetter to make sure all of the fluid is expelled. If you see a drop hanging on it, put it up against the side to make sure you have released all the liquid. Now that you have learned these techniques, make sure to implement them properly when using a micropipetter in the laboratory.